Hello everyone, welcome back to Big Island Television. We're here in beautiful South Kona at Big Island Bees. I'm here with special guest and head beekeeper and overall just, you know, bee master really, Joe O'Brien. Joe, thanks for having us. Thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you, Elias. Well, I'm happy to have you guys here at Big Island Bees. We run about 2,000 hives. We produce at times over half a million pounds of honey a year. And what we do is we give a tour. We run through a hive demonstration. We open up a beehive. We show you the queens, all the behaviors you might be curious about. And then we even show you some of the honey. Anything you might be curious about, this would be an opportunity to get in and see things firsthand. That's great, man. That's great. I got a lot of questions, and uh, as I understand, you're going to put me to the fire and uh, get me in there. Technically, we're one of the largest distributors of organic honey in the country. Our company, between about seven beekeepers, we run 2,000 hives, and each of these hives can produce upwards of 200 to 300 pounds of honey a year. What we're working with today are European honeybees. They're a mixture of German and Italian. So our bees, they're not kept here in Kealakekua Bay. What we like to do as organic beekeepers, we have to isolate our bees two and a half miles away from the public. Our bees are gonna go out in major abundant resources. So that might mean in the wintertime, our macadamia nut groves on the southern end yeah. of our island. In the summertime, it might mean the high forests of our Ohilehua or maybe the lava rock field. So we can move our bees around the island all year round and through each of these movements, we have three movements throughout the year, we produce about 100 pounds of honey per hive. Part of our unique extraction process here in the Hawaiian Islands is that when we go out and extract honey, we just take off these top boxes known as honey supers. These honey supers are smaller than our brood box, but they'll weigh about the same thing. Oh, okay. This box filled with honey will weigh 60 to 80, up to 120 pounds. Wow. Let's crack this puppy open, man. Let's see what we got under the hood. Can I ask a question real quick? Of course you can. We pop this thing off. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get swarmed and die? No, 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 no. The word okay. swarm means that the bees are leaving and starting a new home okay. with their queen. Okay. They're leaving a new queen Because I'm at pretty close proximity here. Well, yeah. luckily, you're very well behaved, I can tell. Okay. I can see it. No, bees are not out to get you. So if Look you out. want to um, behave around them, I would move slowly and calmly. I would treat them like you would your friends. Now we're gonna break in and see everything firsthand. We're gonna grab these grab handles, okay, gotcha. nice and tight, and lift it straight up. Pretty heavy, huh? And then now we're in the brood box. Mm -hmm. It's got eggs, larva, capped brood, honey, and pollens, as well as our queen. So we're gonna break in from the outside and work our way all the way in. So here he is, big eyes, and you can show him to the little camera down here. He's got big eyes for spotting the queen. Big fluffy butt for mating with the queen. Big long legs for grabbing onto the queen, sounding very little Red Riding Hood, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so our boys are only meant for the queen. So, what we might be able to see carefully, honey on the outside. Yeah. Pollen inside of that and their babies in the center. There we are. And our boys, they're bulkier, larger, they stand out like a sore thumb. The boys are VIBs. There you go. They do none of the work and they eat four times the amount of food, I know. So you ready to grab this frame? Just right here, uh, under. Yeah, there you go. Under, perfect. Wiggle your fingers, push everybody out of the way. And what you're looking at here are pupa. So you can see, one, the queen has done a really, really great job. Every single one of these cells has a pupating baby bee. She walks around and she lays about 2,000 to 3,000 eggs a day. Whoa. About an egg a minute or her body weight in eggs every single day. She mates out in the wild with 7 to 14 to 32 males once in her life. Good for her, we don't judge her. Yeah, yeah. Have a good time. Go for it. Do what you can. So you, when you're looking at this, what I've got here are birthday girls. Hey. So you'll be able to see, they'll be able to see 21 days old, let's see. Happy B day to her. She's 21 and covered in fur. Oh, here look she comes. At her. Soft, wet, Whoa. stingless. Yeah, uh, happy B day. Whoa, and they come out like fully grown pretty much. Yes, our butterflies, full grown adults when they're born. That's true. Right? So if they have wings as an insect, 99% of the time they're not getting bigger. You got it? Yeah. And let's take a quick gander, look oh, at the look other. Oh, look how full this one is. Yeah. And they're packed to the brim, we're towards the center. I'm gonna look for the queen real quick. She's about double the size. <gasps> what I've got right here though is a queen cell. This is where a new queen will develop. What they do is they have to choose an egg or larva under 36 hours old, and it has to be fed a specialized diet. It has to be placed inside this queen cell, and over the course of 16 days, it will develop into a new queen. Whoa. When that new queen develops, the old queen and half the bees leave and start a new hive. Whoa. That doesn't sound like beekeeping, does it? 
No. So what we do as beekeepers, we're gonna get rid of this queen cell. I'm gonna break it open. Get out. And what that is telling me is that they're thinking they're either a little crowded or they think maybe a new queen might be needed. And if I don't fix this, I'm gonna have a lot less bees and a lot more trouble keeping them alive. But with our honeybees, if their hive is failing, cool thing, they can leave, go gather food, and then bribe their neighbors to let them in. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, did yeah. you do that on purpose? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With our bees, they're, they're able to join other hives, but they have to convince them that they're going to be useful. And you can see that. There we you know, go, you know, okay, yeah. It's like Play-Doh. Oh, right? okay. Crumbly, the Egyptians used that as a cavity filler. Oh, interesting. They used it in mummification on the inside of the skull. Um, they also use it in cracks and crevices in the boat. Yeah, propolis, propolis. Yeah, propolis. bee glue, we can call it. For the record, Lyman, if I don't make it out of here, don't put me down for mummification. <laughs> what about a honey mummy? Yeah, there we go. A honey mummy is an ancient cultural circumstance where someone thinks they're like at the end of their life. They actually mummify this person in honey and then like a hundred years later they eat them. Whoa. Yeah, weirdos. Wow. I'm gonna start digging a little quicker because I want to find the queen. There she goes. Let's see if they protect or guard her. Yes. So we can see the queen. And you can see the bees move out of her way, touch her, feel her, but oh, yeah. they don't follow her. She's stepping on heads, kicking bees in the face. I got places to go and bees to see. That's so cool. Here's another cool thing. We're linking their legs together like monkeys in a barrel. That's cool. Right? And then we're gonna drop them. Ready? Okay, one, two, three. Whoa. And so then now we're gonna slide it back. All right, we just finished talking with Joe. I'm here with Lisa. She's gonna tell us about what happens after the honey gets back here to the processing facility. So what happens when the honey comes in from the field, um, it goes through a process called extracting. It's a frame by frame process that goes on a conveyor belt. You um, use something called uncapping, which is basically a bunch of like little knives that will take off that first layer of wax, exposing the honey. So then it's gonna go down to the conveyor belt into our spinner and our spinner there is gonna be centrifugal force, which is gonna throw the honey out, and it goes down kind of the side of the spinner, yeah, and then yeah. it goes into our holding tanks. Um, we strain it, barrel it, and then it's ready to be packed. It's usually about, you know, 30 to 40 jars, maybe every two minutes that's going through. Whoa. So it's, it's, it's a fast process, and then it gets boxed and out to the customers. Our company, we focus on honey production, uh, specifically organic honey production. So for our honey, we have three products. We have our macadamia nut in the wintertime, our ohialehua in the summertime, Whoa. and then our Christmas berry, our, our willy likey in the fall time. So with that, she's already ahead of us, but I recommend you start right here All with right, our well, macadamia nut honey. Just, I'll just follow along. This one, right? Yeah, the one that she's drinking. Yes, perfect. Right. Okay, sorry, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> I can see why she went for that one first. Very tasty. <laughs> Classic, sweet, rich. Yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah, nothing crazy, just very... Uh, One note tune in a good way. Sweet, exactly. rich, some get nutty notes, others might get more of a chocolatey tone. Mm. It depends on our palate, but it is delicious and sweet like we expect honey to be. All right. Our next one is our Ohia Lehua. So many of us know it's only found here in the Hawaiian Islands. It's endemic. I'm a big Lehua guy. I live up in Coloco and we got, you know, the yellow Lehua, the red Lehua, and uh, this is pretty awesome. No nowhere else in the world you can find this. Endemic. So this yeah. is only found here in the Hawaiian Islands. And this special nectar is provided not for our European honeybees, but for the Iivi, mm. the Apapane, the yeah, Amaki'i, yeah. all these wonderful Hawaiian honey creepers, yeah, which yeah. are my favorite of the birds here in Hawaii. All right, bottoms up. Mm. It's the texture, the flavor. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's that, how would you, like, kind of like a coarse texture instead of like a gooey texture? Some really people get stereo. a grainy texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's like, yes. it's like, uh, yeah. It's yeah, delicious. And some, for me personally, I get a mm. more, uh, butterscotchy middle yep. with a more flowery finish, right? So it's more subtle and it does great in something like a green tea. Last of our plain honeys is our Christmas berry, the okay. Willy Likey. I really like you, the Willy Likey. That's <laughs> what I remember. But our oh, Christmas he's cracking me up. <laughs> but our Christmas berry is um, more of a common flower and it has a real distinct color, a beautiful gold, and it has a real distinct deep flavor. Mmm. You might be onto something, Joe. We're definitely, definitely different than the first two. 
Great for a marinade, a dressing. Yeah, yeah, more of like a tangy kind of... More depth of flavor. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> so with that, I would recommend think globally and act locally. And if you're really wanting to get a good source of honey, I would make sure you're having a good beekeeping practice. Awesome, right? awesome. Joe, thanks so much. Mahalo nui to you and to Lisa. And uh, please, you guys, come check out Big Island Bees. Take the tour. Get your honey products. I just tasted a bunch of them. Every one of them delicious. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on Big Island Television.